Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about my top five favourite perfumes. Um, this one was actually really easy to pick. Um, I only really have five favourite perfumes. I'm very picky with my perfumes, so I don't normally like the sort of popular ones that in magazines. Um, I don't really know why, I just, I always try, I really want to like perfumes, especially because I love packaging so much and some have really nice bottles, but I never like them. I really don't like sweet perfumes. So um, my perfume taste is quite expensive, which is really annoying because I have to spend more, but the quality's better and I love my five perfumes that I've picked. So I'll start with the obvious ones, which are my diptyque perfumes that I talk about quite a lot. The first one is, please excuse my bad French, L'Ombre dans l'eau, which is this one. And... Um, so it's really hard to describe perfume smells, so I did a bit of research to sort of look into how the brands describe the perfumes as well, because it might help. Um, but this was the first one I got from Diptyque, and I got it in the full size, which is 100ml. Um, and I really love this one. Most perfumes I like are really sort of green and fresh, those are the perfumes I go for. Um, quite fruity as well, but not in a sweet way, in like more of a green, leafy way. <laughs> so anyway. They describe this one as, I've got it here on a piece of paper, lush garden at water's edge with roses and black currant. So you can definitely smell the black currant, um, but it is quite green as well. And I really, really like this one. Um, I can't decide if this is my favourite diptyque one or the other one, which I will now show you, which is Philosicus. And this is their most popular perfume by far. I actually went to a diptyque event last week and they told me that these two are actually their most popular scents. So this one I got in the smaller bottle because I also have a roll-on um, oil perfume of it. So this is the 50ml. I actually really like this size bottle, it's good for your handbag. Velocicus is the fig perfume and I love fig perfumes. I always have, my mum wears them a lot so I've also always sort of loved that smell. Jo Malone also do one which is fig and cassis and um, which I do like but I prefer this one. Um, I've sort of nearly finished this one actually and I'll definitely be buying another one. I don't know if you've ever smelled a fig perfume, but they're all quite similar. They're very green, fresh and leafy. And I think this sort of perfume works all year round as well, which I really like. This one's slightly more summery, but I do wear it all year round. This one is definitely an all year. I love it. That's probably my favourite perfume. Then I have my Jo Malone perfume, which I recently spoke about in my July favourite, and that's the Wild Bluebell Cologne. I got this in the smaller size. Um, but I think I might buy the full size when I run out um, because I really love it. Um, I couldn't describe, in my July favourites, I couldn't really describe the smell because I don't even really know what bluebells smell like. But I looked on their website and they describe it as vibrant sapphire, delicate sweetness, suffused with lily of the valley, elegant luscious with a twist of persimmon. Um, I don't know if that's how you say that. Um, but it's really lovely. I'd recommend trying it. It's kind of fresh and fruity but with an edge, like I said with a twist, it's not your average fruity perfume and it's really really lovely um, and I think this works well in the evening as well so those are sort of my um, Diptyque and Jo Malone perfumes which are more expensive but they're so lovely and I really think they're worth the money they don't go powdery, a lot of perfumes I, I like the smell when I first spray it but then after sort of an hour or so they turn really powdery and so then me and my mum always test perfumes together and we both have exactly the same thoughts on perfumes. We always get really disappointed after an hour when they just don't smell the same on your skin. So always try perfume on. That's another thing with perfume, just don't just smell them in the bottle because they smell different on everyone. Like my friend wears a similar perfume to me and they smell completely different on both of us. So it's really important you try it on, um, don't get like pressured from the counter. Try it on, walk around and see how it sort of develops on your skin. Um, the next perfume I really like is the Armani L or She perfume. I've had this since I was a teenager. My sister used to wear this, I think, which is why I bought it, and um, I really like it as well. This is much more of like a readily available perfume, and I think a lot of people wear it as well. It's... I don't even know. I don't even think it's like a perfume that I would choose now. It's just that it reminds me of like being a teenager, and just the smell is really like familiar to me so I do still really like it. I don't wear it that often anymore. Um, they describe this as floral slash oriental so it's got oriental fruit, jasmine, um, 
and lower tones of cedar, vanilla and musk. So um, yeah, that's kind of the fragrance tones in it. But it's really nice, more of an evening one. I definitely wear this in the evening, not so much in the daytime and more in sort of autumn winter time as well. This is like the opposite to fresh and green, which all the other ones are. And then the final one is another sort of teenage perfume that I've worn for ages and ages and it's Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. Another one which is very popular, I think everyone I know has this perfume somewhere in their collection. Um, the bottle's really big and clunky which I don't like which means you can't take it away with you. But it sits on my dressing table and um, I've actually had this one for ages, there's like that much left. I probably wouldn't buy it again because I've sort of moved on now and found other perfumes that are a bit more grown up. But I do still like it, it reminds me of sort of fun holidays I went on when I was younger. Um, this is much more like a strong perfume. Um, that's another thing I find with perfumes, they don't last that well with me. Like no matter what, even if I spend a lot, they just don't last. I know that you sort of don't smell it on yourself after a while, but I'm sure they just don't last on me. But this one always seems to last quite well because it's sort of extra strong. Um, and whenever I see, whenever someone walks past me in the street wearing it, I can always tell straight away, I'm like, oh, they're wearing D&G light blue. Um, so this one's described as light floral and fruity, with apple, bluebells, jasmine, bamboo, and white rose, with hints of cedarwood, amber, and musk. So bluebells seems to be making an appearance in quite a few of my perfumes, as well as jasmine. So it's quite good to know sort of what scents you like. I always find that hard when I'm looking for a new perfume, and they ask, like, what what sorts of fragrances do you like? I never really know how to describe them so it's quite a good idea to look into the ones you've got and see what sort of ingredients are in there so you can sort of tell the shop assistant what sort of fragrances you like. Um, so yeah that's the final one and these two are definitely sort of younger, easier to get your hands on fragrances and then the Diptyque ones and the Jo Malone are sort of my more grown up fragrances which I'm definitely buying more of these kind of things as I grow up, um, I just prefer the smell of them and I like that they're a bit different as well. I feel like a lot of people wear these perfumes, but I do like them all. So those are my top five favourite perfumes. I hope you found that interesting. Let me know if you'd like me to do any more top five videos. I'll have a think of what I can do them on. Um, also don't forget I've got a giveaway going on at the moment for a neon candle, so I'll put the link to that video below and um, don't forget to enter. So thanks for watching. Bye.